So we do like to record these events so that we can um, share them with the people who were unable to attend in person. Um, so my name is Lindsay Ratliff, and I'm the Director of Enrollment Management here at Fountain Valley School. And I am really excited to be kicking off our um, January event where you are going to be hearing from, you know, really important people on this campus about our academic programs and some of our distinctive programs that I think are really unique to Fountain Valley. Um, in this case, we've asked kind of both the program directors who are the faculty advisors, as well as one student from each um, group to kind of share their experience so that you hear both from the faculty perspective and the student perspective, you know, why these programs um, are so distinctive. So again, thank you for joining and I am gonna pass it over to Ms. Steele, who's our academic coordinator. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see some familiar faces and names on the screen here. Um, so I'm Penny Steele, I use she, her pronouns. This is my seventh year at Fountain Valley. I am currently the academic coordinator. So we would engage in a pretty robust conversation after enrollment where much of what I'm sharing today would be tailored to your new student as they enter into our Fountain Valley community. Um, I am also a part of our history department, and I currently co-lead our DEI committee. And so um, just a quick rundown of the work and vision of Fountain Valley. It's all centered in how we pursue our academics. And so we think with what our end goal is of how we want to graduate our student. And so with that, we really take a holistic experiential learning approach to our programs. And so you'll see that much of our expectations around curriculum have opportunities outside of the classroom to then apply or pursue those passions and skills. So Simon Walker will further talk about our exchange program. We'll be talking about our interim program. And these are all opportunities that allow students to start processing and applying the skills that we see as part of our holistic social emotional learning, a diversity, equity, inclusion skills and value set. And so um, each grade level will also have a distinct approach or emphasis. And so our freshmen come in and we have a program called chapter one and any new student will also have this chapter one abridged program. And it's essentially how to do Fountain Valley successfully. And so as equally as we want students to have grades that reflect their full capacity, we also want students and recognize students need skills to meet those goals. And so chapter one for all new incoming students will address those study habits, um, those open and proactive communication skills, those self-reflection skills, all those um, necessary approaches for students to also take ownership in their learning. Our sophomores will have um, a, an opportunity go, to go to our mountain campus where we have a week long program called Western Immersion. And so again, our unique sense of place being in the American West comes into perspective as we have that in our curriculum, but then we also take students out into the West and we will hike around Leadville, we will um, examine the history of that region and really reflect on what does that mean in our studies here as it intersects historically and environmentally. And so part of the holistic uh, and experiential learning is also really framed around interdisciplinary and recognizing that we are not uh, people who learn in isolation, but we need to understand how things are all happening at once and how things are interconnected. Our junior programs really um, start to pursue the college preparatory process. And so we have a variety of advanced classes. Um, I really appreciate that at Fountain Valley, we actually don't have an advanced track. And so what I mean by that is a student at any time after demonstrating their full, uh, full academic potential and consistency in their academics can pursue advanced or honors classes. So a student as a freshman 
our freshmen come in and they're not taking um, honors classes. We really focus on them learning what it means to be a Fountain Valley learner. And so sophomore year, you start to see those honors classes. And junior year, we have those, um, almost every subject has honors classes at that point. Uh, students who haven't been in honors classes can take them as juniors for the first time or seniors. And our senior program has a quite robust um, ex uh, experiential and electives driven curriculum um, across all disciplines. And so what's really exciting there is you get to know your faculty's passions, their expertise. Um, we have educators in the science department who um, with their value set really try to seek um, environmental advocacy and holistic approaches to tackling the problems our students might face in the future. And so we have a really great sustainable science class, advi um, advanced environmental science class, um, our history department is often reflecting on what are our gaps in curriculum or how can we best prepare our students to understand our ever-changing world. Um, and so students have these opportunities to really learn about themselves, learn about their world, and learn from teachers who are passionate and have these expertise and disciplines. And so what I love about Fountain Valley is the learning is happening all together so we have it happen in our community with the intention of being able to graduate our students to impact their communities. So I'll be happy to take any questions at the end, um, but I hope that shares the larger overview of what we do and why. Great. Thank you, Ms. Steele. Um, and so what I would love to do is actually have our four students kind of introduce themselves um, and just kind of give, you know, your overview, your name, where you're from, your year, um, and sort of what, you know, interests and activities you do here at Fountain Valley to fill your time. And then we'll kind of break out and we'll tell you about our four distinctive programs where you'll hear from the students again. So maybe I'll start with Sam. Do you mind? Yeah, of course. Um, my name is, uh, Sam Baines. I've, been in FES for three years. I'm a senior. Uh, I'm originally from Colorado, but I've been living in Italy for the past nine years. Uh, I'm a residential assistant in one of our dorms, and I play basketball uh, for my sport. Great. My name's Anyola. I have been at Fountain Valley also for three years. Um, I came as a sophomore. And I'm a senior this year. Um, I run cross country. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I can go next. Um, my name is Kate Smith. I'm from Anchorage, Alaska, and I have been at Fountain Valley for four years. And um, I kind of, I originally came to Fountain Valley for like equestrian horseback riding and over the years, I've kind of branched out and like tried different sports like volleyball, tennis, and what else? Oh, the ski team. Yeah. So, Braulio. Hi, uh, my name is Braulio Valenzuela. Um, I'm originally from Monterrey, Mexico, but I'm a day student. I live here in Pueblo, Colorado. This is my second year at Fountain Valley, and um, I'm a member of our Latin Hispanic Alliance. I'm a member of the Student Cultural Organization. I am also a member of Round Square, and I enjoy doing musical theater, mountain biking, and swimming. Great. Thank you. So I hope, you know, you'll take advantage of hearing something that they listed that maybe you're interested in learning more about as well. Um, and so feel free to, to ask our students questions today. Um, and so, you know, as Ms. Steele said, I think one of the unique pieces of Fountain Valley is just, you know, our space, our place and our location, um, you know, but I think one of our big goals is also to get our students off of campus. And so I'm going to introduce Miss Allie and ask her to share a little bit about our interim expeditions. 
Okay, good morning. Um, my name is Melissa Alley, and I am a <clears throat> Spanish instructor here at Fountain Valley. I've been here for 15 years, um, and I am a co-director of the interim program, uh, which is something that makes Fountain Valley extremely special and unique. Um, interim is a one week long program each March where the whole school presses pause on regular academics so that we can leave campus to experience something that we couldn't otherwise experience in our normal schedule. This year, we have 20 different interim options for the students to choose from. The freshmen are able to choose from four freshman interims, um, and 10th to 12th graders have 16 interims to choose from. This year's options range from backpacking Slickhorn Canyon in Southern Utah, to doing a Spanish immersion interim to the Dominican Republic, uh, which is run in 100% Spanish with me. <laughs> Others include going to Germany to learn about the Holocaust by actually going to um, to concentration camps or doing a service trip to Puerto Rico to help re rehabilitate their rainforest, which has been devastated by hurricanes, um, or the New South, which go to Atlanta and Birmingham to learn about not only the American Civil Rights Movement, but also learn about the Black experience today in the American South. So regardless of what interim a student is on, they will be completely immersed in the experience for the week and create bonds with their classmates that last a lifetime, as many of our alumni attest. Um, it is important to us that students are able to escape the FES bubble and um, learn more about the world around them and their place in it. So that is essentially what interim is. Um, I, like I said, this year will be my 15th interim. Um, I have gone to, <clears throat> I've taken students to uh, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Guatemala, um, the Dominican Republic, Mexico. Uh, we have just, my Spanish, obviously Spanish is a little bit of my focus, um, but um, all of the experiences have been incredible um, and profound for both me and the students that accompany me. It's truly a magical experience and, uh, and makes Fountain Valley extremely, extremely special, so. Thank you. And now Kate, do you wanna share a little bit about sort of your, personal experience and, and your interim and, um, you know, how you've been able to kind of take some of the things that you've learned and maybe use them within the classroom experience too. Yeah, totally. So, um, interim has been a really like, I don't know, memorable experience for me over the past few years, because normally it's an experience that, um, students are able to have freshman through senior year and you kind of are able to get the kind of you stay in the country and kind of learn more about the west and everything or you are able to like go to like different countries and kind of get that global international like awareness aspect um and so last year um i went on the channel islands interim and we were able to stay at the channel islands national park it's off the coast of of santa barbara um in california and it was like i mean from what i've heard from people is that it's um it was like really once in a lifetime for like that experience because most of the time with their um like tour guides and how they help plan your trip you're only able to be there for like three days max so being able to be there for the full week and really immerse ourselves in learning about the, the like ecology of the island because there are so many species there it's sometimes we're like referenced as like the Galapagos of the North because there are some things there that are completely only native like to that island and like that little like right off the coast of California and so um it was just really interesting to be able to like I don't know learn all that new information and that also kind of helped me go more into like a science like area of perspective of like interest and in everything for college which I'm excited for but um yeah it kind of Oh, and also just the group itself, not always like there were, I didn't really have like the closest friends with me on that trip, but especially being placed with people in a place that you're not able to take a shower for a week and only have an outhouse and tents to like live in for a bit kind of can really bond you guys in your common experience. And so it's definitely, um, you're able to kind of in a really short experience, be able to learn a lot about a small group of people and bond together but it's definitely mm -hmm. really fun and an experience that I mean I've recommended to so many students this year to go on the Channel Islands interim that they have for this year because it's just 
such a cool experience and yeah you're not like it's not an international trip yet but it still is it's like like once in a lifetime like like we got to see a whale like breaching if that's what it's called like while we were sea kayaking and yeah it was it was so cool and such a fun experience but 10 out of 10 recommend for future students <laughs> but yeah and if there's any questions feel free to ask Thanks, Kate. I appreciate that. And, you know, something that I think is really um, unique is that our interim expeditions, we are approaching like a 50 year celebration of how long Fountain Valley has been committed to this experience. So even for our students, if they were to find an alum from 40, 50 years ago, right, that would be that connecting point is talking about their interim expeditions. And so this is truly, I think, a, a focus um, of our curriculum and our experience at Fountain Valley. So great. Um, just because I know Kate is not able to stay the whole hour, maybe I'm going to open it up. And, and does anyone have any specific questions about interim? Perfect. We'll move on and, and feel free, you know, if you do, you're welcome to use the chat box or, um, you know, at the end, you're welcome to unmute and, and ask further questions. So um, I'm going to introduce Danielle Llewellyn to talk about um, our senior capstone. Hi, everyone. I'm Danielle Llewellyn, and I am a science teacher. And I'll put a quick plug to Kate that it makes my heart feel good that people are seeing science outside the world, even when we're not leading it, which is awesome. So thank you, Kate, and thank you, Channel Islands. And uh, one of my other roles here is to uh, help lead the capstone experience for the seniors. And seniors can fulfill that requirement in one of two ways. They can either utilize what we call our Global Scholar Diploma Program, which, which Mr. Haupt and Aniela are going to explain a little bit more in the future. And that's kind of a year-long program, a little more than that. The other option is a semester-long senior project. And we actually start it in junior year to start the thought process. And we work in the fall, but it's not a class in their schedule until their senior spring. And the goal of Capstone... I kind of try to describe it to students as this is your chance to say, what class do I wish I could have taken at, at Mountain Valley, but we don't offer. And you can create that experience for yourself and explore some passion or some piece of yourself that you have always wanted to be able to pursue and just haven't had the time to do that. So this is one way that they can do that. They can also think about what career they think they might be wanting to pursue. And one of the greatest in the past, one of the greatest things I've heard a student say is, I don't think I want to go into that anymore. And I, I was like, we just saved you about $100,000 thinking about what you now know you don't want to do. So sometimes the experience doesn't go exactly how the student thought. But like Ms. Steele was saying, we are trying to use this experience as a culmination to all of their in-class and experiential learning in a way that they're going to be able to put that forward and really try to maximize their own skills of both independent learning, curiosity, uh, kind of the Fountain Valley core values. We are trying to really implement them into a self-designed course with guidance from faculty, but it is very much student driven and students are very much encouraged to pursue a passion of their own that they have guidance and time in their schedule to learn more about it, build something. Uh, you know, they can they can produce a project, a piece of art. They can write a book. They can uh, do a wide variety of different things. And so uh, we have Sam Baines here today, who you met briefly, and he's going to share a little bit about what he he is doing for his capstone project. And just know that it is a small sliver of the possibility. And if you have an idea, I'm sure you could make it work. So we'll transfer it to Sam. Yeah, of course. Um, so my project, uh, the working title is analyzing NBA statistics to play pay players more efficiently. And um, the real, so basically my goal is to create a program that you can put an NBA player's statistics in and uh, it'll spit out uh, how much money they deserve to be paid. Um, for my personal experience with this, I'm just a huge basketball fan and huge NBA fan in general. And um, also I've been taking AP statistics and I've just fallen in love with that class. I have a great teacher, Ms. Prannell. And I've I just love my project and I'm able to get the full support of teachers and create this own course for myself. And yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it. Uh, yeah. 
That's great. Thank Could you. I just tap onto that really quick, Lindsay? Just one thing, we, we, we love to tap into the faculty members and people on campus. So our athletic director, you know, has worked for a professional sports organization where, you know, ha Sam happens to be in my section for Capstone. So, you know, we try to encourage students if they need a person to reach out to and they don't know or don't have a connection, oftentimes our community members have that connection so we can help them gain access to a doctor or a lawyer or a, you know, a statistician or a, you know, tour operator or whatever that person might be. We, we help students make connections to really see what the field would be like and truly learn more, whether it's because Sam might someday find himself as an MBA executive or whether that's because he might he might just want to learn now and you know forever have that knowledge in his back pocket um I think Sam you were also business club right so that kind of ties in with your uh your other interests as well right yeah of course I I led the business club up until last year until we expanded this year and uh, it's just everything that I've wanted to pursue uh is just great with Capstone and, yeah kind of a great way to culminize kind of your your passions here and and see where this project will take it so that's great thanks sam for sharing um perfect and so kind of on that i thought i would pass it over to jed hop who um can talk about sort of the global scholars diploma that we talked about briefly at the beginning which is a longer commitment um for our students Great, thank you, Lindsay. Um, yeah, so the uh, Global Scholar Diploma Program is part of Capstone. Um, and uh, there are some key differences though. It does tend to be a little more uh, academic um, overall. Uh, students apply for it. They have to interview to be accepted uh, into it. And uh, it does really look at um, issues of our world uh, that affect um, our world, not just on a local or a national or a regional scale, but also just kind of a global kind of perspective. And really any uh, issue can be viewed from that 30,000 foot lens. Um, but um, I think uh, what, one of the beauties of the, the Global Scholar Diploma Program is that it, um, it, it it's a longer journey. So there is a lot more, I think, introspection. There's a series of reflections and global events that students attend uh, on campus and off campus. Uh, they get to engage with a lot of uh, international speakers to the local uh, Colorado Springs World Affairs Council, which Fountain Valley is a member of. And so we go to lunches, we go to uh, uh, discussions, we go to uh, different lectures um, and students get to meet ambassadors, former ambassadors, um, journalists, and 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 through that, uh, through those global events, um, really kind of gain inspiration for their own projects. Um, and I think, um, you know, Angela can speak a lot more to kind of her project, but um, it, it is an, a year and a half long journey. Um, and uh, there are a series of, of, of reflections, as I said, um, <clears throat> leading up to uh, the final project, which is essentially uh, a 30 page research paper, uh, uh, a podcast, a, um, a documentary film or a formal uh, presentation uh, that those are delivered in front of a panel of, of uh, faculty that have been uh, that have reviewed that work ahead of time and and in essence it's the high school version of a thesis defense uh, either a master's the thesis or, or a, uh, an honors thesis and uh, undergraduate um, and and a lot of these students that, that choose to take uh, the GSD program I mean they're looking long term they're looking at what they want to study in college. Uh, career choice um, and 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 there's a you know there's a, a component there of like what do I want to do with my life and how can I really pursue an academic level uh, take a deep dive into a particular subject there so um, Anyela uh, I would love for you to kind of talk about this from your perspective and what your project is all about. Thank you Mr. Haupt so um, GSD like you said is a really good program for kids who want to like dive into a topic deeper than capstone capstone it's like an extra level to capstone um so i started off the year doing a lot of reflections so i reflected on different classes i took and how they um contributed to my global perspective as a global scholars student 
um, how different global events we went to contributed to that global perspective and um, leadership roles. And so then we continued the year and we collected a lot of research. Um, right now I'm in the process of uh, getting a formal interview. Um, so that is a requirement, I think, for both Capstone and GSD. Um, and my project is looking at how the colonization of the Americas sort of provided a framework for the Holocaust. And so this is a topic I've been interested in for a long time, and I wanted to look into it on a deeper level than just Capstone. And it felt like something I wanted to commit a whole year of high school to. Um, it's also a college level project. You're doing college level research. Um, so it prepares you for the next four years as a senior. And then I have to ask, Aniela, are you going to Germany on the... Um... I am not. I am going to France. <laughs> hey. Because <laughs> I thought, wow, that would be a great way to sort of summarize, right? <laughs> That's what Mr. Hop said. I mean, interim does play a really big part in the GSD program because it's a cultural immersion. Um, and that's required for the program as well as community service. Um, but I am not, I'm not doing that in a room. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Great. Um, and do you know what your final project is gonna look like yet? Which direction? You I am planning on writing a paper. So I think we are required to do both a paper and a presentation. So um, yeah, I'm planning on writing a paper and then I'm going to do like my main 20 page paper and then I'm going to probably do like a five page action plan. So what do we do with this information? Like you wrote a whole paper on this. Now what, like why? Yeah. So cool. Yeah, it's great. And then last but not least, you know, we're excited to hear more about the Round Square program um, here with Mr. Walker. Well, welcome everybody. Um, Round Square is a global consortium of 250 plus schools. We've been a member, a global member since about 2012, 2013. Um, as Browley has said earlier on, he is a member of Round Square, which means he is involved in the activities, also a member of our club. Um, the, the organization is based around these five ideals, which spells ideals, which is convenient, uh, internationalism, democracy, environmentalism, adventure, leadership, and service. And to be accepted as a school, there is a rigorous application process, and they're looking for schools that do run their programs and live through these ideals. Um, here, here is a very basic list of the opportunities. I'll talk a little bit more about each one of these. Um, essentially, you can you can do the uh, the, the 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 sort of uh, the standard or the rather the, the blue ribbon um, uh, the higher end engagement here is doing a student exchange, and you can attend a conference. And there's all of these other places where students can actually in, interact with the program. And the key thing is interact with students from other schools. Again, it's really about having this international network, either online, which was something that came out of the pandemic, or in person, which we're finally getting back to. Hold on a second. It's not letting me go forward or back. Oh, I do love Zoom. Hold on a second. I'll get back there. Apologies, everybody. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the Round Square Exchange, this really is where you are um, you know, going from being a tourist to a traveler. We currently have four students here from schools around the world. Um, they are uh, in our dorms. They're in our classes. They're currently from uh, two from Australia, one from Bermuda, and one from Peru. And uh, we host students at this time of year, and then our students go down to what is usually the Southern Hemisphere. Bermuda doesn't count this year. Uh, their schedule is obviously the same as ours. So, you know, we definitely have some challenges with that. But uh, normally it's places like South Africa, Argentina, as I said, Peru, and Australia. Um, and here are here's a current list of some of the schools we work with. Uh, again, they're from those continents and those regions. Uh, they go from being girls boarding uh, co-ed boarding, boys boarding, to being day schools. Uh, another avenue is the Round Square Conference. These happen usually twice a year. We have just come back from the one uh, that met in London, and then we spent a number of days at Oxford Colleges. We were at St. Anne's College for three nights, and then we returned to London to have a full immersion involving community service um, and lots of other um, activity-based pieces uh, with a school in West London. And again, if you see at the bottom of the screen there, the number of cities and the, the actual places where we normally uh, go to for conferences. And students can apply for those the same way they can apply for conferences. 
here's something we're hoping is going to happen for 2023. We're not sure. We had we had a school that was very very interested in Paris uh, working with us. The uh, the leads got a little cold, but every year I'm going to work hard to try to have at least one round square school that can either host us, uh, give us a French immersion piece, um, and be involved with us as we travel the world. Postcards. Now, this is something that came out of the pandemic. We are currently in the process of preparing to host our second postcard. What is a postcard? A postcard, again, is something that came out of not being able to travel. They are 90-minute mini conferences that schools plan and host. And the last time we did one, as you see on the screen there, was November of 2021. There was our conference logo, One Planet, One Chance. Um, the current one we are planning is about safe spaces on campus. And so we're actually having our school counselor uh, be, be our guest speaker. And Braulio is gonna be is gonna actually be one of the MCs for this. And so he knows a great deal. So please feel free to grill him when I'm done. Another piece that we hope really comes back, the, the last one of these, as you see, we went to was 2019, pandemic, of course, kicked in. Uh, these are the big builds. This is where students can apply to Round Square, be part of a group of 50 students with no phones. Uh, but lots of satellite uh, connection and, and uh, they, they actually do a website where you'll see a picture of your student every day. So it's not as if you feel as though you're cut off, but um, there is a, a, the students are building something. They've built schools, they, they built irrigation systems. They, 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 they get to grips with, um, with, with, you know, actually producing something concrete and they have a fantastic time doing it. We were supposed to go to Laos and to Madagascar in 2020. We're hoping that those two trips can be revived for, hopefully 2024. And then another piece, we have a student, um, we think going down to our, 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 our being a gap teaching exchange, well, slash uh, teaching intern uh, at the school on the left there, St. Constantine's International School. The student's gonna go and live and work as a boarding teacher um, in that school for about eight months, starting in, we hope, September. And again, as you see there, there's a, a number of countries do this. The, lo the school logo on the right is Armadale School from Australia. We had a student do this five or six years ago as well. Again, this is actually for students who have graduated. So this is that gap year piece. And the final piece, which is uh, of less interest to the students, I know, but we as teachers have opportunities to go down to these schools. Uh, we had an art teacher come from Australia three years ago. Uh, I went down for a two-week teacher visit and partly teaching and partly observing um, to Australia a couple of years ago. So that's the Round Square program. You can join it. If I just go back to the first slide, you can join it at many, many points, many, many levels. Uh, the freshmen tend to be involved in more of the online pieces. The sophomores can, the sophomores and juniors can attend conferences um, and exchanges and the like. Bradley was ready and waiting for your questions. Thank you. Yeah, so as Mr. Walker um, was explaining, uh, um, I'm a member of Round Square, and one of my favorite things about it is that there's always ways to be interact ways to interact with the club. It's a very opportunistic program, and I have been fortunate enough to be involved in the student exchange. Um, last year in April, I applied for a student exchange, and the Round Square committee um, viewed an application, and they accepted it. So I was given. Um, over the summer, I was in contact with Mr. Walker, and we eventually found a match um, for a junior in Lima, um, Peru. He attends Martin College, and I have been doing an exchange with him. He arrived here about four weeks ago or three weeks ago, and um, I have been uh, uh, talking with him, and we've gone on ski trips, and we've gone out you know, uh, to the mall, and we've been spending um, a lot of time together, and he will leave next week. But um, over the summer, I will be uh, have have the opportunity to go to his school and to get that uh, to get the experience of living in Lima. Um, and uh, I'll be there for six weeks and I'll live at his house. And it, it's I'm, I'm really excited. It's the exchange is a great way for you to immerse yourself in a brand new place. Um, as uh, I am bilingual, I speak Spanish, so I will be able to practice my Spanish. In, um, in a country where, you know, the environment and the culture is just very different, but um, I'll get a lot of um, enriching lessons from it. I'll uh, get some sort of uh, independence from the program as well. And that's one of the great things about Round Square is that it really it pushes you out of your comfort zone. It encourages you to try things that you never thought that you could do. 
And that's what kind of motivated me to do the exchange is I've always wanted to travel. I've always wanted to meet new people. I love learning from new people. That's part of the reason also why I ended up at Fountain Valley is because it's an international school. And that diversity and inclusion is something that I see in a lot of the things that I do. So when I heard freshman year that there was a club that promoted all of those values and that that was the, the core of it, I got really excited and I immediately joined Round Square and I've been doing postcards. I'm currently in the process as Mr. Walker said, of emceeing one of the postcards. Um, I hope to attend one of the global conferences as well, and I'll be doing the exchange in the summer. So um, along, not just with Round Square, but along with many of these programs and different offerings that Fountain Valley provides, it's, I'd say that that's the biggest thing is, you know, not being afraid to step out of your comfort zone because uh, you never know what, um, what interest you might find at school. And that's what Round Square did for me. And I, you know, I'm very appreciative of everything that I've been able to do through that program because it's something that um, I'll definitely take with me and seek for uh, for future schools or future um, things that I do. So. Great. And Bralia, just because I know we have um, our exchange students here now, you know, what are you kind of hearing both from their experience, but also like other students on campus about, you know, having these students from around the globe now here again, because I know it's been a couple of years, so. Yeah, a lot of the students have been excited. You know, they they arrived on campus and everyone was like, oh, like, you know, we have, we have new kids and, and everyone, you know, wanted to meet them and they started reaching out to them. And uh, the exchange students, we had a dinner before they um, arrived at school and they, they were very nervous. They didn't know how exactly they were, they were going to fit into the Fountain Valley community. But I feel like part of the reason why they just were able to immerse so well into Fountain Valley is because we are an international school, because we have those people that you can just connect to um, from any um, sort of spectrum. And I think that uh, now they're enjoying it. They, they're having a blast. You know, they talk with everybody. They uh, they go and hang out on the weekends. They do stuff. Today we have a dance and, you know, they have their groups and they're going to go out for dinners and stuff. So um, they they were definitely nervous. But because of the sort of environment that Fountain Valley has, they were able to be welcomed and to um, be comfortable into this new community. Great, thank you. Well, now is the opportunity, you know, for anyone to feel free to unmute, ask questions to a specific student program, um, or feel free if you'd rather just send a message through the chat. I'm happy to, you know, push your question out to the appropriate people. Quiet group. Great. Well, usually we don't do that well with all of our programming and getting things across. Um, you know, maybe while we're we're here, I'll I'll try to ask a couple questions and see if anything stirs. And if not, we'll we'll wrap up in a few minutes. Um, but you know, sort of. Sam, I, I loved learning a little bit more about your project and, you know, where do you think this tool could be, you know, used or, or grown to next? You know, do you have an opportunity to share it with anyone as, as part of the NBA program? I would say probably not because it's a very high market, but um, it's mostly just a passion project. So uh, I don't think so, but I do think it'll help me later in life as I intend to study finance and statistics. So I think it'll help me there. Yeah, good, good. Well, I know that's always a big topic, right? Is how much we we pay our professional athletes. So, all right. Thank you for breaking the ice. There is a question that's come in through the chat box. So, <laughs> um. And, and Jed, maybe this one goes to you. Um, on average, you know, how many students typically do the Global Scholars Program? Let me unmute, un, unmute here. Um, this year we have, uh, we have four students 
uh, 14 years who are uh, participating in, in the GSD program. Um, in previous years, we've had as many as uh, in the teens, kind of the middle teens number. I think kind of the, the perfect, you know, the, the, the magic, you know, the magic numbers, they were kind of between eight to eight to 12, uh, given the size of the senior you know, class at any given time. Um, you know, a small enough number where I can, uh, or, or other adults can af efficiently meet with them one-on-one -on, -one, um, on a weekly basis. Um, so we do like in the spring semester, for example, right now, uh, we do have kind of a seminar class called Global Citizenship. And um, within that class, not only are we studying uh, global topics, um, you know, outside of the, 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 the individual projects that the students are working on, but, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at the concept of global citizenship. We're looking at current events. Uh, that are happening globally. So, for example, you know, obviously the issue uh, happening in uh, or the war with uh, Ukraine and Russia um, that um, one of our students, not Anyela, but one of the other uh, students uh, is looking at um, carbon car carbon trading uh, as a means toward um, alleviating uh, um, uh, global warming and climate change and how the European Union has been using uh, the carbon carbon credit trading as a means toward carbon offsets. But how is that being currently affected by the war in Ukraine, knowing that uh, Germany in particular and Western Europe uh, has uh, historically gotten a lot of its uh, oil and natural gas from Russia. So, you know, with, with the war currently going on, how has that been affecting the issues of, of, of energy and reliable energy in Western Europe? So that's just one, you know, area that one student is currently looking at right now. Um, and we do try to keep our numbers uh, somewhat small just so that, uh, so that I can give uh, a lot of particular attention to those students on an individual basis. Uh, Danielle, uh, Llewellyn, from the science perspective, as you know, as someone who is um, involved with Capstone, I'm working very closely with Danielle this year in particular uh, to kind of round out less kind of maybe the humanities and more of the science and. I can jump in there just to finish Jeff's thoughts since it's about the science part, but uh, we are trying to just make sure that students recognize that it's not only the humanity help of that, but of teachers that their own. Um, so that would be, um, you know, what, what that is. I, and I don't know. Am I, am I not able to hear? Am I coming through really uh, broken up? I apologize for that. <laughs> Don't worry, we got the majority of it. And then Danielle sort of jumped in. Do you want to finish, Danielle? Sorry, I was just saying, I think what Jed was getting at is that I, I, I love learning from my humanities colleagues who are in this program about some of the research aspect of things and, you know, articulating a well-crafted paper and all the humanity skills. And yet, I think the the huge aspect of, of potential for the GSD program is to also incorporate some science, as we see with a pandemic that does not obey laws of boundaries of countries, that there are absolute opportunities for our students to explore sciences on a global perspective as well. So so I'm really excited to work with Jed a little bit more on just enhancing that opportunity for our students as well. You know, the pre-med students, the epidemiologist students, the, uh, you know, the, the people who are really looking for that global connection on how we make a difference from a science perspective, climate crises, things like that. So it's a great opportunity for collaboration. Perfect. Well, and, and you can see a few of them coming in. Um, maybe Penny, I can ask you to answer the question about sort of the core curriculum and the framework for the four years and kind of the overview of English, history, math, yeah. science, and and where we're so, headed. And I know <laughs> your, your team's doing a lot of work, so. Yes, so we are in this transition period, which I actually think for the last year or two, our department chairs have already been engaging in these conversations and much of that um, has centered on what are we emphasizing and what are we missing? And so we're really looking at what is unique about Fountain Valley. And again, it is our place in the American West. Um, and so 
that's really guided much of our efforts in solidifying the direction of each department and how students learning evolves from freshman year to senior year. And so um, I'll just share briefly some quick overviews by discipline. So English, you will have, students will have English every semester, every year. Um, and so part of where we see the necessary skills for students to be effective, critical, compassionate leaders are also um, built around students having the skills to know how to discern credible information, knowing how to source, knowing how to effectively communicate in the various forms that we communicate now. And so part of the conversations we're having are, do we need to have a 10 page research paper from the first year to your senior year? Yeah. And so we've been looking at the breadth of um, types of learning. So English classes will have a um, American uh, literature component, a world history component or world literature. Um, there is also looking at um, place and perspective. And so that, that course blends um, writers from around the world um, but also local writers or um, domestic writers and just understanding how where you live informs your um, capacity to engage. And so we really use English as our way to demonstrate value set. Um, similar with history, we have a, um, we're, we're transitioning to looking at this sense of place again in our historical record um, and our our place in history physically as Sorry, being in the West. And okay. so um, we're in that transition point of freshmen coming in and actually starting with that understanding. But part of our curriculum is also to develop a sense of community. So again, our community physically is in the American West. And as freshmen first enter this community, we want them to really understand their place here, but then their broader place um, in the American West, and then just the agency and values that come with that sense of place. Um, so from there, we have our world history electives, um, which can be our honors world history. We then have US history and our advanced world history. Honors and world correlate to our, um, the AP exams. And so we do offer in each discipline honors and advanced classes that correlate to that, that subject or that particular discipline as associated by the college board's AP exam. Um, sciences look at um, biology, chemistry, physics, but then again, broadening our approach with how do we have students apply their science learning? So we have Colorado natural history. We have sustainable science where students are making um, food products as a way to understand the how, how you source food or how you source your items and how that is a sustainable and possible process. And that we are doing this learning as a way to also provide solutions that our students feel confident sharing as possible answers when they look at, okay, what are the problems of the world that I am responsible for tackling now as they graduate here? Um, math at this point, we're, we're transitioning from algebra two to pre-calc being our, um, our graduation requirement. So reaching that level of math skills. And so something that I share a lot of times with our students is who may not love math, it is absolutely beneficial to be able to have the patience as a learner and also to develop the logical thinking that's inherent to math. And so each of our disciplines have, have content and content delivered by faculty who are really passionate in those fields, but then our content is all paired with skills that can be applied to any discipline or any choice that a student makes for their learning and occupations later on. Um, so that's that's the quick overview, but essentially every course um, leads to three and a half to at least four credits um, by the time they graduate with a lot of wiggle room in that senior year to pursue electives in any discipline. Great, thanks Penny. Um, there's a great question that I think maybe I'll, I'll ask 
Braulio to start and then the other students can answer too, but what advice would you give to incoming students about getting involved in programs and how to make choices amid all of these wonderful opportunities? Because I know Braulio, you are, you are busy, you know, <laughs> so how do you choose what to, what to get involved in and maybe what to say, I don't have time for that. Yes, totally. Um, well, like I was saying, you know, kind of with, with the with the round square about um, using up all the opportunities that you have, because you never know, um, you know, what good might come out of them. I would definitely apply that to every other aspect of, you know, of what we have to offer. Um, like, for example, for the sports last year, um, I decided to do mountain biking as a sport. I was an inexperienced mountain biker, had never done it before. I had, you know, just really biked around my neighborhood. And, um, and I did it. And it, it turns out that I loved it. You know, it was exhilarating. It was fun. It would stress me out at the same time. But it was it was a very fun, uh, enriching experience. And it taught me a little bit also about, you know, teamwork, and how to uh, manage like my own schedule and how to, if I want to improve, you know, putting the work into it to get better, to improve those skills. And uh, now I love mountain biking, you know, it's, it's so much fun. It's, it's very peaceful for me in a in a different kind of way, um, but I enjoy the sport a lot. Uh, I did mountain biking again this year. Unfortunately, I dislocated my shoulder, so that kind of took away from a lot of the um, season. But uh, but it's definitely something that I'm looking forward to, and something that if I had not taken that risk freshman year, I would have never found the love for the sport. And now it's something that um, I greatly enjoy and recommend for everybody to try out. So using that same mindset, but with other aspects of Fountain Valley is definitely something that I encourage, you know, not just incoming students, but also students that are already here to, to do as, as well, you know, uh, whether it's joining, uh, maybe taking a class or a language that maybe you have no idea about or um, doing a sport or just talking with somebody. It's, it's that kind of... Um, that, that sort of uh, mindset that a lot of the students here on campus have and something that I greatly enjoy and that Fountain Valley kind of allows me to practice that skill too. It's, it's, a, it's a nice place where I can, um, I can step out of my comfort, zone, my comfort zone and enjoy it. And it's a place where I know that if maybe something doesn't work out, I can always you know uh, go back to what I was doing. But it's, it's, a, it's a great, setting for you to to kind of reach those different limits those different heights and to kind of find out a little bit more about yourself and what you want to do great Lindsay I'd like to just jump in and answer that last question um, sure. a little bit about the international student experience and then um, maybe Braulio um, as one of our significant SCO student leaders can can expand but um what I love about Fountain Valley is we do, it is a international boarding school. And I do think a lot of our domestic students not only benefit, but really appreciate having peers, having those global peers in their dorm, in their classroom. And so there's, there's two ways I want to approach this. And one is through the support that international students have, and then the celebration of having international students. And so that area of support is we do have um, a fabulous team of international student advisors. Um, Hans Gaston and Xu Ying Tan work very collaboratively. Um, and then by extension, um, Mr. Fred Williams and myself as part of our DEI community leaders. And so international students um, have the um, they come onto campus a few days early just to adapt. We acknowledge jet lag is a very real thing and um, just culture shock. And so our community wants students to thrive um, as they are and to become the best person they can be. And it's hard to do that when you're like in a totally new community. And so we have international student advisors who really facilitate those learning spaces to process um, those first couple of weeks together where it's like, what did I sign up for? But then also balancing that excitement um, with, with that, that questioning piece. And so our international student advisors will often 
be the ones you go to to check in with and and just share those experiences that are unique to being in a place that does not look like your normal home. Um, all with the intent then of us providing a community that feels like your new home. And so um, another way that we go about that and celebrate that is we have the student cultural organization. We also have um, the Latin Alliance. We have um, the Asian Alliance and Chinese Club and um, looking to revive the BIPOC affinity group where black and brown, indigenous and people of color. And, and that by extension, is a space to process uniquely the experiences you're having in a space that does feel at times, frankly, foreign. Um, and so what is great about us also being an international community is that there is enough international students to share that experience. So it's not just you're the only one experiencing this, um, but you have a embedded community already sharing in the unique experiences. Um, as a world history teacher, um, I, I love teaching about culture and then by extension leading the student cultural organization. And so I think many students do feel celebrated and seen as they are. Um, and, and our goal is to not have students fit into that American perspective but to find a place in this community that we get to understand who they are. Um, so that adaptability is not um, through assimilation, but the idea of you can feel equal to being a community member no matter where you're from, and that as a community member, we understand who you are and we celebrate that, um, which are really the values of SCO. Um, I don't know if we have time for, for Braulio as a student to speak to that, but I just, I wanted to reiterate the, the celebration and support for our international students and families. Braulio, do you want to add anything or you feel we good? Um, I mean, generally what Ms. you know, what Ms. Steele said is that the student cultural organization is a great group for students from all kinds of, you know, backgrounds, cultures, and ethnicities to really, share their kinds of um, perspective and ideas of how they want to um, share their cultures or their identities on campus. Uh, we have uh, uh, back in November or no, in October, we had um, a, uh, the celebration called Unity Day that SCO facilitates at the school. And um, on Unity Day, we all take, uh, we have these workshops that we attend throughout the day and we learn about these people from these varying cultures, these uh, varying uh, backgrounds. And it's it's a great way of, um, you know, realizing uh, the different, the the diversity that we have on the campus. Um, we also have our international food potluck, which is where students from, you know, international uh, countries and, you know, you know, varying identities can share kind of uh, the food, traditional foods from their, from their places. And it's a really, really delicious afternoon. Um, and just recently, uh, last week, we had Martin Luther King Day, which uh, celebrated, you know, the uh, contributions that Martin Luther King had towards the civil rights movement and, you know, giving, uh, providing a voice for minorities in the United States. And uh, we were able to also attend workshops and kind of learn about that movement and also what we can do with it, what um, a call to action as to how we're going to use this um, on our campus, in our community to better uh, uh, support each other. And SCO is a, a, um, a really, I feel like it's a very essential group um, on campus because it's, we have, we have our um, separate alliances and affinity groups, but SCO is the one place where students from all of these different uh, areas um, can come together and collaborate and work together as to how we can make the campus even more inclusive, even more diverse. Great. Well, thank you so much. I think that was a, a great um, way to kind of wrap up our program and and for you to hear today, hopefully a little bit that is new information for you, but also just continues to um, educate you on what makes Fountain Valley very unique and distinctive um, as you go through this application process. Um, so just a little friendly reminder that applications are due 
February 1st, um, which is quickly coming up. Um, so do not worry, there's still plenty of time to get that paperwork in and you'll be hearing from your admission counselor this week about the specific pieces that are missing. Um, you know, but I, I really hope that you will take this time um, to, to continue the process with us and learn more about Fountain Valley. Um, so thanks everyone and have a great rest of your weekend. Bye. Thank you.